So next one is Eber Small model. So this is uh, one of the different models available to characterize a PJT. So model means it's a mathematical model with a diagram saying that your NP and transistor can be replaced by this model. Okay, model means you will have an equation along with the diagram. So like this, we'll be seeing so many models in this unit. One is Eber Small model we are going to see. Then you have one is called as H parameter model. Then you have hybrid pi model. Then you have Gamel Poon model. So all these different models will take the different uh, transistor characteristics and will give you an equivalent circuit for the transistor. And those equivalent circuits will be governed by mathematical equations. Okay, you should understand what is the need for modeling a transistor. The play on NPN transistor only, if you see it and analyze, you cannot analyze it because only one equation we know IE is equal to IC plus IB. With that single equation, I cannot model my transistor. So for that, only what they have done, they have considered the different models of transistor based on the different conditions. The first and the very famous model what we are seeing is Eber Small model. Okay, so I maybe I'll show you the diagram. So this is the Eber Small model diagram for a PNP transistor. You have it for NP and also this is for a PNP transistor. So you have a three terminals, emitter, base and collector. So emitter is P type, base is N type and collector is P type. Okay, so you emit you have an emitter base junction, so you have an voltage, so you have a diode here. You see, you have a forward bias diode here, and you have a collector base junction, you have a reverse bias diode. So, the diode polarity diode or a diagram it is changed, it is completely opposite. And you have the forward bias voltage across the emitter base junction VE and the reverse bias voltage across the collector base junction. Uh, EC and you have the current source alpha IE into IC. This is alpha N into IE. And we will see what is alpha IE and alpha N. So I will I'll say what is alpha IE and what is alpha I as we derive that in the equation. First to understand the diagram, so any transistor can be represented by voltage source, diode, and current source. That is the basis of an ever small model. See here. The three terminals of the transistor emitter base collector you see, you have a diode, you have a current source, and you have a voltage. So in the other junction also you see you have a diode, you have a current source, and you have a voltage. Okay, so this is what this ever small model is saying. So any transistor model can be simplified into voltage source, current source, and diode. Okay, so we will try to understand what all these current source as we uh, see the basics of PN junction diode. So the general expression for collector current in any transistor, you are going to give it from the diagram like this. So you see from the diagram, one current, yeah, you consider this node. You consider this node, one current is coming. Uh, sorry, this current this alpha n into i e is coming towards the node i c is also coming towards the node this i e is going away from the node so as per node analysis i can write alpha n into i e plus i c equal to i okay that is what is done here and from that if you find i c i c will be equal to minus alpha n into i e minus i and what is that i it is the current going through a diode in reverse bias so that car di diode current is given by minus ic not into e power vc by vt minus one is this first equation clear the first equation i am going to write it in the collector side so in the collector side in this collector node i am going to apply nodal analysis so total incoming current equal to outgoing current so two currents are incoming one is ic one is alpha n into ie other current is i so i can write ic plus alpha n into ie equal to i or i can write iec equal to minus alpha n ie plus i and this i is going to be equal to minus ic not because of the reverse saturation current going through your diode and from the diode current equation i can write I minus ic not into e power vc by vt minus one so, so alpha n is the current gain in normal operation and alpha i is the current gain in the inverted operation okay normal operation means the uh, when the transistor is biased in a proper way okay and you know ic naught is the reverse saturation current 
why reverse saturation current because you know that the collector is the engine is going to be reverse bias so whatever current uh, you are going to add along with the collector current that will be the reverse saturation current because of the reverse biasing of collector base junction this is your first equation from the diagram now go to the same diagram apply the nodal analysis here so one current is coming this current is also coming this current is going outwards so i can write ie plus alpha i ic equal to i dash or ie is equal to minus alpha i ic plus i dash okay so see here i is equal to minus alpha i ic minus i dash so i dash is going to be the diode current equation i not into v power v by vt minus one so alpha I is the inverted common base current gain we don't worry about all these normal current gain inverted current gain they are just constants to indicate that the current amplification is taking place that is the only thing otherwise it is going to have no other significance just to indicate that the current gain is happening inside the transistor we are going to have this uh, two constants so, okay so the when you write al ic equal to something into ie you have to use alpha n when you write ie equal to something into ic i cannot use the same alpha n so i am using another constant called as alpha i so, i and n suffix indicates inverted and normal current gain and definitely i naught is the emitter junction reverse saturation current okay see here the emitter junction is powered by us the current flowing is negative so in the reverse saturation current is flowing in this opposite side okay because the same diode equation i am having i am going to use it so alpha ic is i is equal to minus alpha i into ic minus i e naught into e power v by vt minus one this is the second equation involving the the emitter current so we have found the equation for collector current and emitter current performing node analysis at the two terminals emitter and collector and all these four parameters alpha n ic naught alpha i ie naught they are all related by this relation alpha i into alpha i into this opposite current ic naught will be equal to alpha n into this opposite current ie naught See here, alpha i into i c naught equal to alpha n into i e naught. So this is how the four parameters are related. In how this this relation is done now, it is from the experiments they have found that the product of the reverse saturation current and the current gain are going to be the same. So when you take the emitter current, the corresponding gain you have to multiply with the collector uh, reverse saturation current. So when you take the gain in the collector current alpha n, you have to multiply with the emitter reverse saturation current. So alpha i into i c naught equal to alpha n into i e naught. So this relation is uh, holding good. And you know that uh, i e naught, the emitter saturation current is very, very small. It is just 50% of i c naught or maximum it can go till i, I c naught. Okay, so they say that by measurement, the IT, IE naught, the emitter reverse saturation current is either ranges from 50% of IC naught to full IC naught. Okay, so two separate ideal diodes are connected. So in the di diagram I have shown you, the so two separate diodes are connected back to back. Back to back means connected immediately. You see, there is no connection dropped here. So this diode is connected to N, and this diode is also connected to N. So I can say these two diodes are connected back to back. Back to back means at the same terminal, OK? So the two separate ideal diodes are connected back to back with saturation current minus IE naught and minus IEC naught, so which are uh, going to be the reverse saturation current. And you have two current control sources which are shunting the diode. Shunting means parallel. So you can see here. The current source is connected across the diode. We can say the current source and diode are going to be in parallel connection. Okay. So the current sources account for the minority carrier transport across the base. So the current source will indicate the minority carrier transport. So if you apply the Kirchhoff uh, voltage law, so that is what we have done. So you get the equation IC equal to minus alpha n into I plus I naught into E power V by V C by V T minus one. So the same Kirchhoff old, uh, current law you are going to apply at the collector. So if you apply the collector, you can say IC plus alpha n IE equal to I. IC plus alpha n IE equal to I. 
or IC equal to minus alpha and IE plus I. So that I is going to be the reverse leakage current of your diode. Okay, I naught into E power VC by VT minus 1. So where I is the, you know, I is the diode current, I is the powered diode current, and I naught is going to be the reverse saturation current. That's how you get this equation. IC equal to minus alpha N into IE minus IC naught into E power VC by VT minus 1. So IC naught is going to be called as your reverse saturation current going in the character base junction of your transistor because that is the junction where the that junction is the only junction in transistor which is reversed by us so you need not call it as icb naught we just call it as ic naught there is no difference icb naught or ic naught both are going to be same so this model is forward valid for both forward and reverse voltage applied across the transistor junction so this model is used when you are going to apply the forward and reverse bias voltage across the transistor junction so here icb naught and ic naught instead of writing icb naught it is very lengthy i can simply write it as ic naught so whenever i write ic naught it is clearly understood that it is going to be the reverse leakage current flowing in the collector based junction so explicitly i need not write icb naught so i am writing it as ic naught okay there is no need to write icb naught so i am writing it as ic naught so if you if you can if you remove all the current sources from the diagram then your alpha i will be zero and alpha n will be zero because the current ic and ie will never be zero because they will be uh, the current will be existing because of the voltage applied across the emitter based junction collector based junction right so i you whenever you are going to remove the current source it does not mean that the currents have to be made zero the constants have to be made zero so if, if i remove these two current sources then the immediate thing is you can write alpha n equal to alpha i equal to zero. So what that the condition what is what does mean is the base width is made larger than the original base width, then all the minority barriers will combine in the base and no minority carrier will be reaching the collector. See, that is the reason why the base is made very thin. The base width is going to be made very, very large means a full recombination will happen inside the base itself and the minority majority carriers will not be reaching the collector so that uh, that problem will be there so that is the reason why we are having the base with very very thin the base area very very thin and very very light doping we are going to do at the base so in that case when there is no current available the collector then there is no amplification so alpha will become zero so that is the reason the alpha value is given to ensure that all the charge carriers emitted by the emitter side will have that's what i said the ratio is 100 so if i emit 100 electrons five will recombine at the base and 95 will cross to your collector giving rise to what is called as collector current IC. Okay. Sir. Yes. I have a doubt, sir. Here yes. you said the collector based junction is always uh, reverse bias, right, sir? Correct, correct. Here in the diagram, the, according to the diagram there, the positive terminal of the diode is connected to the P and uh, negative terminal is connected to N, right? So then it looks like forward bias, sir, the diagram. No, this uh, that's what I said. This configuration is holding good for all the four combinations. The four combinations of biasing are there, you know, right? Emitter yes. based junction is forward, forward. I have forward, reverse. I have reverse, reverse. I have reverse, forward, right? So you have four combinations, right? Four combinations of biasing, I told you, right? So this ever small model is holding good for all the four combinations. So here they have given you the biasing type is emitter phase junction is forward by us. The character phase junction is also forward by that case they have given here. Okay. Sir. Okay. So that's what you see. The, I will show you the line. See, see this uh, pointer, uh, what I'm showing. This model is varied for both the forward and reverse bias voltage applied across the transistor junctions. So this model is applicable for all the four combinations. So as you said, we are more focused about the forward bias, uh, forward biasing of emitter based junction and reverse biasing of collector based junction. So in that case, the diode polarity will be, as you said, the diode will be in this direction only. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
the diode will both the diodes will be in this direction so yes. one yes now i think uh, your doubt would have been clarified so yes thank you, yes, yes, thank you. So that's a good question so depending on the diode uh, direction you can easily find out whether it is forward bias or reverse bias so when the the diode uh, this triangular symbol right so that comes first and then you have this line coming that means mostly it will be forward biased but uh, when uh, but you cannot uh, blindly use that you have to see what voltage is applied here and what voltage is applied across the diode that you have to see it before concluding whether the diode is forward biased or reverse biased okay so as per the diagram what is given here both the uh, diodes are forward biased so the first uh, diagram the first biasing characteristic they explained here forward forward so same way you can imagine the diode positions for reverse reverse forward reverse and reverse forward so four combinations you can uh, draw the diagram for a burst mode model so that's what they say if i'm going to remove the current source means they say that this constants become zero and what is the explanation for all these constants alpha i and alpha n becoming zero is which is possible only when the base region is larger so when the base region is larger, all the minority carriers in the base will be completely recombining with the majority carriers combined, coming from the emitter. So then there will be no uh, majority carrier available to cross the depletion region and reach the collector. So all the recombination happening immediately at the base. But then the purpose of having a transistor itself is lost, right? So that is the reason why base is not having a very large area base is made thin base is having a very very smaller area compared to emitter and collector and base is also going to have less amount of doping because the recombinations at the base should be restricted so what scenario i have told 100 electrons are coming 100 holes are coming from emitter means you have five recombination at the base and 95 holes will cross and go to the collector so if this condition is there when you have alpha i and alpha n if these two condition is not there means all the hundred all the hundred holes will recombine with 100 electrons in the base giving rise to zero collector current so which means the purpose of having a collector terminal itself is not there so that is the reason this should not happen so that is the reason why the base region is made thinner that is the kind of observation we make from a burst mode model so whatever justification we have given in the beginning for the construction of bjt all that is justified by the burst small model also so the chances are that if uh, every uh, majority carrier is going to recommend the minority carrier in the base the amplification will become zero so as a result, the transistor action ceases. That means the transistor is no longer a transistor. It works like a normal PL junction diode only. Hence, it is not possible to construct a transistor by simply putting two diodes back to back. So with the, just by putting two diodes back to back, you cannot say that that is the equivalent circuit of a transistor because you have to include definitely have to include the effect of the currents so if you don't include the effect of these two current sources then the logic of having collector terminal in the transistor is going to be completely lost okay so that is going to be the upper small model so any doubt in upper small model you can ask i'm going to pass for a few seconds any doubt you have please do ask This is an important question from exam point of view also. So they will ask you to explain the first small model. It's very simple. Just draw the NP and P equivalent diagram for a first small model and explain how you get the currents IC and IE and what is the relation between all the constants. And you have to clearly explain in what happens if I exclude this, uh, if I make this gain to be zero. So that uh, reasoning has to be done clearly. You should explain why that gain cannot be taken as zero. Or if it is taken as zero, you have to say what is the consequence. Okay, that is the that if you write those things, a small model should be completely 